welcome back to this series of videos looking at the Norman Conquest. In this series of videos, we're looking at Invasion, the second mini unit. And in the last video you looked at, we looked at Normandy in 1065. So what was Normandy like before Invasion? In this video, I'd like to then focus back now on England. I'd like to talk about the succession crisis of 1066. Who had a right to the throne and what happens next? So in this video, we're going to look at really this question here, which is how strong was William's claim to the throne of England? And this is quite a complicated story. So you probably are going to want to pause this at separate points to make notes or to understand it properly. Now, this story starts in January of 1066. And in January of 1066, Edward the Confessor is dying. And you can see Edward the Confessor here uh, in that green shawl in, on, lying in his bed with a beard. And at the foot of his bed, his wife, Edith, wipes away a tear. And also present were his servant, Robert, Archbishop Stigand, who we've come across before, and importantly, Harold Godwinson. And according to the chronicles of the time, with his dying breath, he praised Edith and he reached out a hand to Harold and said, I commend this woman and all of the kingdom to your protection. In other words, saying, Harold Godwinson, I want you to now be king. But this is complicated and it's complicated because Although Harold, through that statement there, had a claim to the throne, he is not the only one who has got a right to take over the King of England. And in order to understand this, we need to understand a family tree, and it is complicated. So let's begin. Now, we need to understand that this starts with the Anglo-Saxons, and it starts with a king called Ethelred the Unready. And Ethelred the Unready married a lady called Emma of Normandy, and they had children. One of them was called Edmund, and one of them was called Edward the Confessor, who is the king who has just been dying in 1066. Now, Edmund, first of all, is king, and he's king only for a year in 1016. And Edmund has children, and he has a son called Edward the Exile. Now, this is where the story gets more complicated. Because in 1016, if you remember back to one of those first videos in this series, the Vikings invade. And this Viking in particular, Knut of Denmark, invades England. And in 1016, he takes the king, the throne, he takes the crown of England. And in, for 1016 to 1035, Knut is king. And Knut marries Emma of Normandy. And together, they have some children. Harold Harefoot is one of his children, and Harthur Canute is his second son. And Harold Harefoot, another Viking, that's why we're there in green, is king from 1035 to 1040. And then Harthur Canute is king from 1040 to 1042. This is where it gets more complicated. Because in 1042, the Vikings are pushed out and the Anglo-Saxons are pushed back in. And really, by 1045, Edward the Confessor has now taken the throne and he rules until he dies in 1066. Oops, I've gone the wrong way. Now, Edward the Exile, meanwhile, who is Edmund's son, has a son called Edgar Atheling. And Edgar the Atheling was born in 1051. So Edgar has a right to the throne because he is a direct bloodline to Ethelred the Unready. He is English and has a right to the throne. Edward the Confessor on his deathbed also says that somebody else has a right to the throne and that is Earl Harold Godwinson. The Vikings also claim that they have a right to the throne. And Harthur Canute, arguably, passes a promise to Harold Hardrada, another Viking, that he 
also has a right to the English throne because Harthur Canute was r- r- rudely pushed out of England and actually he's happy that Harold Hardrada has a right to the throne. So far, quite complicated. Let's make it even more so. And to make it more complicated, we need to understand who Emma of Normandy is related to. Now, Emma was the sister of Richard, Duke of Normandy. Richard was the leader of Normandy. Richard had a son, Robert, Duke of Normandy. And Robert had another son, William, Duke of Normandy. And William, technically, as a result of being related to Emma, also has a claim to the throne. So we've now got four people who've got claims to the throne. Edgar Atheling. Really importantly, he's only 15 in 1066. But he's English and is a direct bloodline to the previous king. Earl Godwinson is also English, but does not have a direct bloodline to the king, but was told by the previous king, Edward the Confessor, that he had a right to the throne. Harold Hardrada is a Viking and has been promised the throne by previous kings, Viking kings, in particular, Harthur Canute. And the final claimant to the throne is William, Duke of Normandy. And William has a claim to the throne because through his granddad and the sister of his granddad, Emma of Normandy, he also is directly linked to England. So there are four claimants to the throne. Now, as we started this video off, Edward, dying, promises the throne to Godwinson. So that's what happens. And pretty much immediately, as soon as Edward the Confessor has died, Harold Godwinson, and you can see him sitting on the throne here in an image from the Bayer Tapestry, takes the throne. And he is pronounced as King of England by Stigand, Archbishop Stigand, the corrupt one, who you can also see here. And it says Stigand here. And you can see that the people in England were happy. Now, funnily enough, there are three other claimants to the throne and their reactions are quite fascinating. Edgar the Atheling isn't that bothered. He's English. He's told what to do by the Witan, the Anglo-Saxon government, and he's told to support Harold. And he does. Harald Hardrada is not happy, but he's far away in Scandinavia. William is particularly not happy. And William's not happy for some bigger reasons, because, and this is where we need to go back in the story, and it gets even more According to William, and again, this is a scene from the Bayer Tapestry, Harold Godwinson had visited William in Normandy. And Godwinson, at an earlier date, promises, putting his hand over the relics of some saints, that he would support William in William's claim to the throne. And actually, Godwinson was saying in this scene that William had the right to the throne. As a result of this, William of Normandy is incredibly angry. Harold Godwinson has gone back on a promise that he made to him and has now stolen the throne from him. William needs to do something about it. And what he does is prepare for invasion. And the Normans in the first half of 1066 are fast preparing for invasion, cutting trees down and building boats ready to cross the English Tunnel and attack. And that invasion is where the story begins in the next video.